Rock and roll. Hey, I don't know about you guys, but hey, let's give Jesus a little bit of applause. Hey, hey, hey. You know, for me, man, the Lord saved my life, guys. He's redeemed me, and he's been giving me this amazing life, guys. I went to the Salvation Army, like I said, San Bernardino. I went through there for a year, and I surrendered right there, and I turned my life around, guys. I repented. I got at the cross, and I changed direction, guys. Let's bow our heads in prayer, all right? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for everything that you do. Please, Father, continue to shine in the light, Father. Please continue to give us chance after chance. Please continue to just have a change our whole mind and change our whole spirit, Father. Please continue to thank the Salvation Army and have an attitude of gratitude. As we're super thankful that as all the doors close, this one remained open. And we have a legit opportunity to try to change our lives around and move into another direction. Please, Father, help the past get further and further away and help pull us to the future, Father. We love you so much. We thank you for dying on the cross so now we can have a great relationship with the Lord. And we love you for this, God. Thank you so much for William Booth who started the Salvation Army in 1890. And it was to save addicts. And they're doing the same exact thing that they're doing now, guys. Please, Father, please continue to bless every man in here as they were in the dark, as the same as I was. And now they want to come out into the light with their integrity and they want to be the man that they've always wanted to be. They can do this right here, Father. We thank you, Lord, in all that you do. And we love you and we love you and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, guys. Hey, um, I just want to share a little video. Uh, my podcast came out, out last night and it's just absolutely, hey, guys, thank you, guys. All, all the glory to God, man. Hey. All the glory to God. We will continue to uh, try to save lives with it. You know, um, you guys continue to get some clean time. You guys graduate from here. You know, I'll bring you guys on as a guest. You know, we'll just continue to share the good news because I love my Sally boys, man. I was a Sally boy. I did this program, guys, and I absolutely love it. I believe it works. I believe it's the best program in the world. And I know in the beginning, guys, you guys, it's like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But just stick it out because when you look back, you will be so thankful that you went through this program. When you get out of here, you are going to be a beast in the workforce. You're going to have your integrity back. You're going to have a legit fresh start. You're going to have an amazing higher power. And you're going to have a whole different perspective on life from the inside out, guys, because it's not about what we receive. It's about who we become, guys. It's about the person and the man that you become, and you will get out of here with a purpose that you don't have to get paid for, but it will fulfill you from the inside out. I want to play my monologue and just a little bit of it, and then I'm going to share two parables. All right, guys? Thank you. the local neighborhood hope dealer and the host of your 90 and 90 podcast guys we want to get awareness out there on fentanyl and awareness on the disease of addiction guys because it's an absolute killer guys what we suffer from is in the beginning of our addiction it messes with the dopamine system it messes with the reward system as a false hack in our brain so no matter what we're feeling like that day it's going to absolutely change everything for the good and make everything feel amazing so at some point this is our only solution that we have so we start to obsess over it and when we try to get clean and sober what happens is we have the obsession of the mind and it will continue to play back the good times that's why they say you're always chasing that first high but we know at the end of our addiction that this is not true we have to continue to have the tools to be able to save our lives guys and God will turn your mess into a message I want to share my testimony a little bit so we understand exactly what I went through and how my mess became a message guys so I grew up in Victorville California and I grew up with a family and I had no discipline I was not disciplined I used to call myself a liquor store boy I used to go to the liquor store no shoes, no shirt, and a Slurpee, all right? That's the way I grew up, okay? But I continued after I turned 19, I was drafted by the Houston Astros. So I was a professional baseball player for 10 years. And at 19 years old, I was given $120,000. And because of my childhood and not having no discipline, I could not have the foundation to be able to handle this. So then third year of my baseball career, first two years are going good. My third year of my baseball career, life on life terms hits me and I start to struggle with my anxiety. I start to future trip. I'm constantly worrying. So I start to go to drugs. I start to go to alcohol and I start to smoke marijuana to try to ease my pain, to self-medicate guys. And at the beginning, like I said, it takes us to heaven. It feels great. It's like, oh man, this is what I need for the rest of my life. I had no foundation to be able to walk out of the stadium and be able to turn around, turn away the God, what, what the devil had to offer. I had 
no, no way to turn that stuff down, guys. I did not see the devil's fiery arrows. I was getting plummeted with them. I continued to chase pleasures every single day until I was 28 years old. And this is where my addiction took a turn for the worse. I show up to the stadium and I'm doing struggling with my anxiety, right? I'm 28 years old. I'm in AAA. I'm driving my brand new Tundra, making $6,000 a month. I have this amazing house, this apartment that I'm staying in. And I just have this amazing baseball career going on. But I'm struggling with my anxiety and I just really have low self-esteem for some reason this day and one of my teammates goes hey man you want to try this pill so now this is when amphetamine touched my body guys and it disguised itself as heaven and it took me straight to hell the minute that I put the Adderall in my body everything changed for the good I, my arm felt great my anxiety went away it was like the limitless pill I went out and I pitched that night I struck out 10 guys in four innings and I was able to drink all night long and wake up with no hangover I thought I found God I was like this is what I need the rest of my life I was suited and booted the next day and I had a doctor and I was now prescribed to Adderall and I thought at first because of the first two years the lifestyle of playing professional baseball and being on Adderall was so amazing it was such a high it was awesome but you got to learn how to eat when you're not hungry and you got to sleep when you're not tired and I end up losing a lot of weight so my last season of my pro career is now four years later and I'm now 31 years old okay I'm six foot four 180 pounds now throwing 85 miles an hour now I have three doctors in each city now I'm hooked on ephedra and Adderall my truck is repoed and now I'm about to end my last season of my baseball career and go home and live in mommy's house in my own bedroom with my little bit literally bounders on the wall that's where my addiction took me to guys and it didn't end there because the obsession was so strong because it was the only solution I had ever had in my whole life to deal with my disease so I get on methamphetamine after baseball because I'm lost. I don't know what to do in my life now. I, I had played baseball. I had gone to stadiums for uh, 10 years and got paid for it. I had no idea what to do in my life now. So I end up going to crystal methamphetamine. I get a job over at FedEx. I end up blowing that because that's what happens. You end up blowing every opportunity you ever get because your whole main focus is just to get high every single day. So I start committing crime at 35 years old and I start that whole process of going in and out of jail, in and out of jail, in and out of jail. I used to tell people I was misdemeanor, Mr. Misdemeanor, but then guess what? I caught a felony because that's what happens. Because when you put the drug in your body, you will go to drug jails, institutions, and thankfully I'm not dead. I'm able to share my good news right here. But at 37 years old, guys, I was finally plucked out of my environment of Upland, California for three years where I was in a vicious cycle of getting high off heroin and now meth because that's what happens. Tolerance happens and we end up drowning ourselves more and more in the drug to where we honestly have to get high just to forget the person that we had become. That's how bad it gets for us because we now tap the whole dopamine dry and now all we're doing is waking up and we're trying to get well so I end up going up to uh, Redding California and I end up going to a, be a vendor in a parade right so I don't have any needles to be able to get high with I don't have the instrument so when I look back I know that God saved my life by taking me up there and I could not get uh, uh, I could not get syringes at any one of the Rite Aids CVS and then finally at Walmart I told the lady at the front of the line I said I need syringes I'm a junk I'm a drug addict and she looked at me and she said get out of my store you junkie I went on the side of the building guys and I absolutely cried for the first time but this is the moment the gift of desperation that God gives you this was my rock bottom this is the moment that I could not use no more I had to turn my life around guys I got up from that wall and I came home and I turned myself in and now I've started three years sober last Saturday and I'm super thankful full of gratitude that the Lord saved me and he showed he showed a uh, favor on my life but for me it started out three months in the county I went to jail and I slept and I surrendered to God at that moment because for 37 years old guys I chased earthly pleasures and every single one of those wells ran dry and the last three years I put in God first I put my higher power first and he's changed my whole entire life because of the change of perspective I went to the Salvation Army and what I learned there is I had to be able to change my behavior in the moment guys I had to change my behavior in the moment so I learned all about faith so now I have faith for my future I don't future trip no more I know God's got me right I don't stumble on something behind me say if you're driving in a car you got a rear view mirror all right it's small because you're only supposed to peek at your past the mirror in front is big because you're supposed to focus forward that's what faith allows us to do and then we're able to stay in the moment because the moment is all we have I'm sharing my story in the moment a month from now will be the moment we have to be able to seize the moment with good intent guys I had to humble myself right I had to work 40 hours for free in the Salvation Army for my room and board I gave up myself 
cell phone for a year. I gave up women for 16 months. I gave up social media for two years, guys. But what have I gotten back? I've got an amazing job in recovery, right? I got an amazing relationship with my higher power who talks to me like it's the best baseball coach I ever had that tells me, let's go, baby. You probably shouldn't do that. You probably should do that. I have an amazing relationship with my higher power. I have an amazing wife. I went 16 months with no girl. What's God given me? An amazing wife who's in recovery. And I'm so thankful we wake up on the same on the same team every day with a non-toxic relationship, right? My social media, two years, no social media. Now I have a YouTube channel, Monty Mansfield, a hope dealer. I spread the good news and it's growing. I've been having this awesome opportunity to run the 90 and 90 podcast, which you guys are going to hear right now. It's just beautiful opportunity to be able to share, save lives and spread the good news, guys. I work the steps. I worked the steps because it gave me my integrity back. It cleaned out all my baggage. Then the 10th step, I continue to take moral inventory every single day so it keeps me in the moment. The 11th step, I get on my knees every morning because it's a sign of gratitude to wake up early. I get on my knees every single morning and I thank Lord, I ask him for his will and the strength to carry it out. Then the 12th step is to carry the message and that's what this show is all about. This show is about carrying the message and saving souls because right now, Fentanyl is not even letting people hit their rock bottom. It's killing people. The obsession of the mind will continue to try to minimize your relapse. And then once you put the drug in your body, it will now maximize the relapse. And now people are dying because they want to get high just one more time, guys. Getting high is not the solution anymore. We have to find another solution to our life and to our disease, right? Your disease is doing push-ups behind you. The minute you put it in your body, it's about to take over your whole entire life, guys. So we are going to spread the good news. We're going to spread the message. And like I said, I'm so thankful that my mess is now a message now. And I re sometimes I ask the Lord, I say, God, why would you save me? Why did you save my life? And I hear this small, still voice inside and it goes, let's go, baby. play just a little bit. So then, so then how the format is, is, uh, hey, my name's Monty Mansfield. It's pretty cool, guys. guys. You know what I'm saying? I'm super I'm thankful. The 90 and 90 podcast. And, and like, you guys know Mike Bird, right? Get the word out there. You guys know Mike Bird. He sponsors some people here. Young people out there to check on the internet. He was my guest, uh, he was my guest yesterday. So, all right, bro. Thank you. Box. I know. All right, guys. Anyways, man, I'm just super thankful for that. Dude. I'm super blessed. Uh, I want to share with you guys, okay, so when I first got to the Salvation Army, there was two parables, uh, one parable, I know some of you, I want to share a parable that really saved my life when I got there, and I want to share a quick parable to, that, that, that saved my life when I was exiting the Salvation Army, okay? The first parable that I heard was, and, and you guys that have been here, you guys heard me share this, but I have to share this to the new guys, right? It's the prodigal son, it's the prodigal son parable, all right? There's two, there's two brothers that are out on a ranch, right? There's two brothers out on the ranch. The, other, the one brother stays out at the ranch and he stays in his comfort. To me, it's called like a normie, a normie that never goes out there and sees what the devil has to offer or never goes out there and sees what the earth or our earthly pleasures are all about. The other brother asked his dad, he goes, dad, can I please get my inheritance? And the dad goes, sure, man, go out there and get your inheritance, man. Go, gives him all his inheritance and all his money. So what's the brother do? He goes out into the world and he squanders everything on prostitutes, on alcohol, on all earthly pleasures. He squanders it all, guys. And I can relate to this, and I think everybody in here can relate to this. When I got my signing bonus, I went out and squandered all that money. Any type of money I ever had, I used it for bad, and all I did was chase earthly pleasures. Well, what happens is the brother gets, the famine hits the city. So life on life turns now hits the city. So now he's out in the pig slop and he's working in the pig farm when he used to be on this comfortable ranch. And he's out there in the pig slop and he's eating the pig slop, right? And he comes to this point of desperation where it's called the gift of desperation. It's like your rock bottom. It's the one moment in your testimony where at that time you thought you ruined your life. And if you stay clean and sober, you'll look back and it'll be the most powerful day that you ever lived, guys. That's the gift of desperation. He ends up going home to the, to the ranch, but he's super nervous and he feels a lot of shame, kind of like how we are trying to come to the Lord after we walked away for so far, right? We feel like we might be punished or he might not treat us the way that we would like. But what happens is the dad sees the brother from far away and he goes, he goes, oh, this prodigal son's coming back home. And he starts to throw it, he starts clapping, he starts cheering. Well, the other brother's jealous and he's like, well, why would my dad be cheering that, kid, that my brother squandered everything out there, right? Well, the dad, as he comes back, he tells the servants, he goes, cut the biggest calf. He goes, throw the biggest party. 
And the brother's like, why would you do that, dad? Why would you do that? He squandered everything. You know what I'm saying? And the other, the one brother is like the person that never walked away from God. That's like the brother, that's like the person that always stayed with the Lord, but never went out there to see what the world really has to offer, what the devil has out there. So when the other brother came back and the, and the dad looked at him, he said, son, he goes, your brother walked away from the ranch and he went and saw what the world had to go out there. He saw what the world had to offer. He squandered everything. He hit a rock bottom and now he's come back home and now he'll be home forever, guys. And I share that parable because I heard that in the Salvation Army and that was what I did. I looked at it as my life. I walked away for years and I came back home and now the Lord has shown favor because I choose him. If you, he will come a million, by, a million miles in your direction. God will stand right here next to you your whole life. But instead, you use the gift of free will to choose him <laughs> and be with him. He's not gonna, it's not gonna work out for you guys, all right? And I know this because I'm not 30, I'm not 20 years old going, oh man, can I do this? Oh, can I do that? No, bro, I'm 41. I've traveled the whole United States, Mexico, and Canada. I've seen what the world has to offer. And there's nothing, guys. Ecclesiastes, King Solomon, he had all the money in the world to go out there and see what the world had to offer. And he came to the conclusion at the end of his life that the only way to find true joy and happiness is to walk right with God and live in the light of the Spirit. Get your integrity back and don't compromise it for no. And I believe this guy, but that's the prodigal son parable. Now for you guys that are about to graduate, I want to talk about the parable of, the, of all the disciples out in the boat, right? There's a bunch of disciples here on a boat, right? There's a raging storm, right? So you're about to graduate, right? You're about to move on. You've got some momentum here. You're doing good. You want to keep the ball rolling, right? You want to keep the ball rolling, but you're a little bit nervous, right? Because you want to stay on course. So the whole point of this parable is Peter gets up on the side of the boat and as he keeps his eye on the Lord and Jesus is on the other side, the storm calms and, and Peter steps out in the water and he starts to walk on the water, guys, because he's got his mind focused on God, right? He's got his mind focused on God. The minute he starts to look in the other direction, he starts to notice the storm and he sinks, guys, and he sinks and he falls in the water. The point of that parable is that when we're about to graduate here, we all get a little bit nervous, right? We got to go on to the next step. We've worked so hard in this program, six months, right? We worked so hard to change our life. We got at the cross and we repented. Repented means change direction. That's all that means is to change direction. Repent. Now we're sharing the good news. We got to be able to keep our, our eyes and focus on the things that we learned here. Keep our eyes on the Lord. And the next thing you know, you'll wake up outside of this program and you'll be like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And then you'll, the next day you'll be like, oh, okay, I am changed. And the next thing, you'll be like five days out of here, and you'll be like, man, I have changed. And you'll start to believe it. And that's keeping your eyes focused on God and what you learn here until you're about two weeks and you're staying focused. And now you're moving and grooving and you change your whole life around, guys. I see a bunch of miracles in here. This is just an amazing place, guys. There's so many other treatment centers that try to meet the addict halfway, but that's not what's going on, man. It's got to be hard. Your, your, your come down, the first come down that you have, it has to be horrible. You have to remember it. You have to remember it so you never want to go back to it, guys. It's not about being met halfway. You guys graduate here. You guys keep the ball rolling. You got some momentum right here. And just keep the ball rolling, guys. Hey, I just want to say thank you, guys. You guys are going to have a great day at work. Thank you, guys, for all your support. You guys have been absolutely amazing to me and my wife. My prayers for my wife, guys. I absolutely <laughs> love you guys, all right? Hey, let's have a great day. And, hey, love you too, Monty. Thank you, guys. Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys so much.